you know, right before I started this recording, I had the air conditioner running, you know, because I want to get this room cold enough where I can record for a while without running the air conditioner because it sounds very horrible, right? So, um, scrolling through YouTube, just looking to see if there's any reactions from anybody I cared about. And I ran across, you get a lot of suggested videos, right? And I ran across one, and there's this guy, apparently his naming scheme is My Wife Watches X for the First Time. You know, my wife watches Jurassic Park for the first time. My wife watches uh, Lost for the first time. My wife watches whatever for the first time. And it's probably a knockoff on uh, me and you at the movies or something, which I love that channel. But, you know, it's where, you know, the guy has seen everything and the woman hasn't, so they watch it together. And um, one of these days I'm going to do a video on my opinion. Of the, there's various reaction channel formats. There's like five or six different formats that you know, Every reaction channel falls in one of these formats. I fall in the solo reactor format, right? But uh, there's one of the formats is one person hasn't seen it, one person has seen it. I won't get into what I think of that for right now. But you know, the naming scheme is my point. The problem is when you fall into a rut and you do a naming scheme like that for all your videos, you then have to do that naming scheme when it's nonsensical. My wife watches Obi-Wan Kenobi for the first time. Well, no fucking shit. We're all watching it for the first time. My wife watches Boys the season, you know, the Boys season three for the first time. No fucking shit. It just came out yesterday, right? So, it then, then it's nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense, and you actually look like an idiot. And I'm not mocking this channel. What I'm saying is, you can fall into a rut when you do things a certain way, and that's all you fucking do, and you've done it a certain way for a long period of time. You stop thinking about why you're doing it. I seriously doubt it even crossed this dude's mind to question, should I change the naming scheme for this one particular set of videos because it's nonsensical? No, it never crossed his mind because that's what he names everything. He probably has a copy-paste, copy-paste like I do with the, I just posted some Mad Men reactions, right? And I copy-paste. So the last episode was uh, uh, the season finale of season five. You know, part one, part two, you know, it's episode number, part one, part two, right? And so I copy it over and I change the episode number. Because that's simpler than retyping it's the same thing every time. And especially when you retype the same way, you're not going to be consistent. So he probably copies it over, plops the title in there. And now YouTube is actually, it has a dynamic learning system where it says, hey, do you want to reuse elements from your previous videos? And, you know, like titles and, you know, shit like that. And um, I don't do that because I'm a control freak. I copy over. But you can, so maybe even does that. So th you're in a rut. You do things the same way all the time. You stop thinking about why you're doing them. Okay? So why is this relevant to Legends of Galactic Heroes? Because Yang has been stuck in a rut for years. He's been, I'm going to get out of the military for years. At least, what? Uh, how long has the series been last? We've it's covered, what, two years of time that we've actually seen their lives? Probably been, I'm getting ready to get out of the military even before that for a while. Now he's out. Now what? Reinhold, you know, the Duke, has been, I'm going to take over the universe for so long. I'm going to become the Emperor for so long. You, you have a particular way of thinking when you're the Predator. But he's not the Predator anymore. He has devoured everything in sight. There's nothing left. Unless a new alien race comes up, and apparently aliens don't exist in this universe. At least, you know, it, it's scientifically, it makes sense because... In the grand scheme of things, they're in a small part of the universe. The universe is really fucking big. There could be plenty of galactic civilizations of aliens out there. You just haven't encountered them yet. The point is, they haven't encountered them yet. I doubt they're going to be encountering them in the next two months. So, he's not the predator anymore. He's the prey. People are going to be coming for him now. Can he switch gears? Can he switch to thinking like the prey and defending himself against people coming at him. Like, for instance, that Fezzing guy, you know, the guy who's in charge, he knew his son was coming for him because he had spent years being the prey. He was already on top. He had been on top for years. That's why he was able to anticipate this and defeat his own son because he had been thinking like a prey for a long time. I don't even know if, if Reinhardt is capable of thinking like prey. He's such a good predator. Is he even capable of it? And can he afford to be stuck in a rut long enough to learn the ropes of being the prey? That's the interesting question before. Because I don't really know what the rest of this season is going to be about. 
I'm very curious to find that out. Let's go ahead and jump into it. But um, those are my thoughts leading into not still not knowing where we're going, even though we've had a couple episodes since the armistice. All righty. Well, we're going on one. Three, two, one. Is this still the same song? Nobody chimed in in my last series of videos I put out there as far as whether or not this is still the same song from the beginning. I mean, I could compare. I have the whole series in front of me. Maybe I'll do that between recordings. <laughs> I do like the animation here. Very melancholy, which is fitting. War is sad. The end of a war is really sad because then you can truly assess the damage. What's the final number of casualties? What's going to be the cost in the years to come? You know, we're still paying for the cost of Vietnam and Iraq. You know, we had the Agent Orange shit from Vietnam, and I. I've been hearing about, like, the Iraq disease. I forget exactly what they called it. Like, there's something happening from people that were over there. They were exposed to radiation or something. But I don't know if that's one of those old wives' tales or if it's just rumor or if it's actually a thing. But that's a potential cost. We'll probably start seeing the cost here. Yeah, what, motherfucker? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, it's almost like you guys are in on it together. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> it's political. Just get you a slam piece. Who even deserves the honor of being with him? Like, You don't want to do a noble family. But people be outraged if you do a commoner. Mm-hmm. God damn. Jesus, I ain't heard of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck, dude? You got quite forward. Look at that look on his face. I think he's amused and outraged at the same time. Yeah. Kill them all. Let our imaginary God sort them out. Oh, shit. I don't know about all this. God damn. <laughs> Quit using the royal we, motherfucker. It's creepy. He's heavily steeped in monarchy. I wonder if this series is being written now, another 20, 30 years hence, if there would still be this monarchy obsession. You know, maybe. Things do come back around. Oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, there's no, no shock there. <laughs> he does have a rebellious spirit. Right. Well, 
You don't want to make a martyr, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> damn. One glance and you're terrified. Calm down, dude. Hmm. That would not surprise me, actually. It sounds like him. Yeah, <laughs> cornered rat will bite the cat. I like that. Yeah, just a few minutes. <laughs> That's one way to put it. He told him to go fuck off. Yep. You're off the hook. What? Yeah. You were thinking in your head and you started speaking out loud. That's a little weird. We all do it. <laughs> yep, exactly. It does surprise me everybody's talking about this shit. <laughs> God damn. Consider yourself roasted, though. That was a compliment and an insult at the same time. Oh, shit. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Very poetic. That's the same with a lot of people. Uh, let's not talk about a stock, if you don't mind. <laughs> so poetic. I like to see a crossover between this show and Succession. Because both of them have very flowery, poetic language, a lot of great visual metaphors. Let's not talk about the Empire's Trunk either. Man, Mofar's just, what is this, Grand Central Station? Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speak up, motherfucker. Don't equivocate now, because this dude's here. Oh shit! These motherfuckers need to stop talking. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> He's the boogeyman. So he don't believe it. In fact, he's mad. Okay, that's good. That's a good trend. I mean, you wouldn't have found anybody's remains. It's all floating out there in space. This is outrageous. Yeah, it seems a little silly for me to mean have gotten this upset about a fucking rumor. <laughs> Maybe I should have sat down and stopped being such a drama queen. Oh, so these rumors are false, is what you're saying. God damn. <laughs> yeah, it's a little creepy. Hey, you like my clear wine? I suppose it's white wine. I don't really know. Or sake, you know. What color is sake? She's ready to kill that ass. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, but you're the one in the way of the knife. Pretty much, yeah. I knocked his book over and everything. Yeah, look at that smile on his face. Evil. Yeah, because I told her everything. Yeah, <laughs> what a dick. There's something wrong with this dude, man. This dude is fucked up. Something wrong with this motherfucker. I like it. Nice how they set this up before they, you know, they show this next scene. The episodes are referencing, that was quite a while ago, was it? It had to be more than 12 episodes. Because <clears throat> I've seen a bunch in a row and I, that was not part of what I saw. So it was quite a while ago. I don't like where this is headed. Why are you... If you're talking about sex, why are you equating her hands with uh, your mother's hands? Because, holy shit. Jesus. <laughs> Get his ass. Yeah. Get this motherfucker. <laughs> hey man, we can't afford what we can't determine what situation we're born into. It can both be one doesn't excuse the other asshole. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're beneath me as far as raping goes. <laughs> we don't need your final fucking... <laughs> I 
Yeah, I might have to do it again for the new emperor. <laughs> I have to say, she seems a little upset. <laughs> Pretty much, he's the one that had the balls. Right answer, because he would kill you if you went for him. She might kill you. Yep, he'll never see that kid again. Looks pretty snazzy. <laughs> or he's bad luck for ships. You could look at it one way or the other, right? Yeah, or else. Regain your honor or else, motherfucker. Yeah, this is awkward. Yeah, that's what people do when they're climbing mountains. <laughs> that's right. Pull the age card. <laughs> When you're climbing mountains, you have to establish a base camp and stay there for a couple of days to acclimate to the pressure sometimes. I don't know how often. I just know that's the thing they do. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Probably smart. Okay, I know we're there. Oh, shit. Jesus. Yeah, what they say, there's less than a billion on the entire planet. I can't remember. They told us. 10 million, that's what it was. The Christian era, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> God damn, man. Well, they're here to force the issue, so. Well, we definitely need the women in booze. Oh, shit. Jesus. Holy shit. <laughs> Again, some more age hatred, Jason. Man. Well, first, playing that card both directions. Here's your donations. Now, let us pass. Oh, shit. Really, dude? Really? That's what you're thinking about? Something wrong with this motherfucker. And we already know what it is. Yeah, they don't care. Oh, shit. Better get on your knees. When in Rome, man. Who's this motherfucker? Look at him. The fuck you looking at? <laughs> That's just like when the Duke came by and he was looking at him. You gotta avert your eyes real quick. Calm down, dude. <laughs> Face like a dead tree. <laughs> Old redhead, he's weird, but I like him. How dare you question me, minion? Makes sense. Schemes within schemes. <laughs> That's right. Get me drunk. <laughs> the stage is set. Visitors. I think we're getting the invasion next episode. I think that the whole point of all this was to set that up. And I had kind of a long intro, so let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Alrighty, let's go ahead and jump into this. This is episode 59. We're going on one. Three, two, one.
Yep. Long flowing locks. <laughs> they were talking about the marriage, and I think they obviously they have somebody in mind. I mean, that's um, I'm speaking of this as it's happening in real time, rather than like this was plotted out long ago, right? But say we're a member of his court, and it's happening in real time. Is it better to just do a commoner so you could just say, "Look, fuck the noble houses, fuck all the nobles." This is a new world order, and I'm going to prove it by dating this unwashed peasant, right? Or do you solidify some of your political power by you know, marrying one of the noble houses, right? I would go the commoner route. In fact, maybe what I would do, not even necessarily even commoner route, to say whoever's the, the titan of industry. Like I'm sure they have like industries, you know, they have like uh, corporate people. But not necessarily like bankers, but people who are in charge of actual production. Whoever's the most important figure, whoever has a, the most important figure in that industry who has a daughter of marriable age, I would do that. So you're kind of linking yourself with the core production, like one of the, the backbones of, industry, of, of, the, of the empire, right? Oh, shit. He's reading all that shit. But that's what I would do, yeah. What you finding out, man? <laughs> I love this backstory, this world building shit, man. This is what I was talking about. This has way more of a strong world world building than any other animated show I watch. I wouldn't call this anime. But it is an animated show. And this has the best world building because they go into this kind of stuff. I mean, you're talking about shit happening 600 years ago. So the ugly women can't get any play, huh? <laughs> yep, you gotta do this. 60 beloved concubines. That motherfucker was fucking... Jesus. He's like, well, I'm gonna put this aside. This paper is sticky. <laughs> he was the Tywin Lannister of the group. Oh, shit. They're basically going with every, like... <laughs> They're basically going with, like, every kind of leader you can have, one one after the next, right? Because there's always going to be the boring leader. Yeah, you know, the United States have had the boring presidents, you know? You know, uh, Ulysses S. Grant was called Useless S. Grant when he was the president because he didn't do shit for eight years, you know? Useless S. Grant. Damn. Oh, shit. Yeah, I bet that hurt morale. Which means that dude was actually ruling the country. Yep. Chief operating officer, in other words. Yeah, see how they're going back and forth and shit? This is good world building. How's that ironic? Oh, okay. I get it. I should have let him finish the sentence. <laughs> This is kind of what I was just talking about. Oh, shit. Getting too big for his britches. Oh, fuck. 
Fuck, he was ready. Ow. He should have brought more than four men. Just saying. <laughs> we were all confused. Oh, shit. He said, just long enough to rob the place blind. God damn. Yeah, probably the oldest uh, monarch ever of anything. <laughs> oh, he's going to make a play for the throne, ain't he? Better not miss. Yeah. It's kind of like... Um, uh, Morgan Freeman, he's been old as long as I've been alive. That's a long fucking time. <laughs> Dumbass. Yeah, these are the best pussies right here. These five. Oh, shit. What the fuck are you trying to do? <laughs> God damn. So it worked. I didn't think it was going to work. Yeah, they were tired of this motherfucker. Yeah, like I said. Did they hold up a fucking cue card? <laughs> well, this is awkward. Yeah, that's right. Keep reading this shit. I'd expose it all. Oh shit! God damn, man. This is uh, this is how they keep the weed saws and make motherfuckers kill themselves like this. Some general or somebody. That's how they do it. I like that they they're consistent with that. Right. <laughs> He's mad at the motherfucker. Yeah, I got just cause. Get rid of this son of a bitch. <laughs> Jesus. God damn. That's a long time in fucking insane asylum. Damn, that buffer spent a lot of time behind the padded low walls, man. Jesus. Yeah, we won't get into that right now, though. We've talked enough. <laughs> These dumbasses. No, that's right. You gotta, you gotta study history, man. 
I'm suspicious of people who don't study history. And I mean suspicious in their intelligence. You can't study all of history. you got to pick a period. But if you don't study any of history, you know, you're probably just not very intellectually strong. I'm just saying. Everybody studies some people. Anybody I've ever talked to, you know. I guess I'm trying to think. There's a couple people I've known who just didn't study any part of any kind of history of anything. You're like, come on, man. You're just not intellectually curious at all. Yep. You're going to be put in a padded room for 70 years. God damn. That's some bullshit. <laughs> this is poor shit, man. Uh, they stink. I don't know, man. She gets a pension too, I hope. It's the people watching you. <laughs> or, like, not even just watching, just guarding your ass. No, they can't. They don't trust you. It has nothing to do with pestering you. They're not doing this because it's fun. They don't fucking trust you, man. I wouldn't trust you either. <laughs> he ain't doing shit. I'm telling you, man, that's good times. What's your point, sir? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get your point now. You know, you got to believe they would have killed his ass. Like, if the Germans had captured General Patton, they would have respected the hell out of him, but somebody would have killed him. Somebody would have been salty. Most of them wouldn't, but you just takes one, just takes one, right? One person who got smashed by him in one of these battles would have killed his ass. You know, I mean, it's just... I'm trying to think. I can't really think of any examples in history where that happened. You know, Robert E. Lee was not murdered after the Civil War. But you know, some people were pissed. I guess maybe that's a good a good analogy, actually. Robert Lee, he was not murdered. <laughs> Talk your shit. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're just following orders, man. I've never been mad at the grunts in the field, like, you know, the, the clerk at the, the grocery store or the fast food place who's enforcing a rule they didn't, they didn't create the rule. Why are you mad at them, you know? Uh, what's the difference there? <laughs> oh, shit. Now he's a bastard. What if they're listening to you? I'm sure they are, right? <laughs> I get what he's saying. Exactly. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing the long game. <laughs> You're not getting involved in anything good, that's for goddamn sure. Yeah, we ain't smashed yet, what's happening? What about my cooking? Do you like my cooking? <laughs> you 
got to be able to fend for yourself in the kitchen, you know. It's great if the other person knows what they're doing, but everybody, if everybody can fend for themselves, you're in good shape. Crepes and hamburgers? That goes against God and nature. Well, I wasn't really asked for chicken marsala. No, I wasn't. By the way, he could learn to cook too. I'm just saying. That's kind of what I've been driving at here. <laughs> Cats like these people are crazy. <laughs> Yeah, all they do is spend their time talking about food, man. Jesus. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> Hell no. Don't offer them shit. They'll stick. They'll keep coming back, just like cats, right? Yeah, the proudest looking. <laughs> How's she going to determine that shit? The fuck you want? Yeah, I'm mad. She's not. Oh, you're trying to poison me. Yeah, this is completely inappropriate. Yeah, I already poured it, man. <laughs> this is awkward as hell. <laughs> Wasting my goddamn time. <laughs> Why'd she pour five? There was only four people here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get, yes, get to it, motherfucker. I ain't wasting this shit. That's what I'm saying. She shouldn't have poured the shit until she found out, man. That was stupid. Why is it on him? <laughs> get to it, motherfucker. <laughs> Why five glasses? The hell was that about? I like his microphone. Like, apparently, like, maybe he does radio addresses or some shit. Right. They want to be able to punish him. Yeah, you got to make an example of these motherfuckers. Sometimes you got to educate <laughs> I guess that other kid would have been the fifth person drinking the tea. What kind of game are they playing here? Big Sis Frederick Rico. It's actually a secret code, but you know. <laughs> Something's up. That's what I was asking the same damn question. What is that about? I'm just wondering why. It's not about being happy. Like, I want to know the answer. Why? What's the protocol here? Hey, there's something in this. <laughs> I could eat in that. These buffers are disgusting. Man, I can't wait till we invent email. Of course, they'd be monitoring email. You'd have to do it this way anyway. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Well, I guess you got to bake them a pizza. Exactly. Uh, we're pals. Throw a block party, right? Everybody know, at the block come in. If you're in another country, which a lot of people watch this are, do you even know what a block party is? 
It's an American thing, I think. I don't think they have block parties in Europe. It's weird. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> Everybody's got to be a fucking smart ass. Uh, we're hanging out, man. Yeah, see, I suck at it. God damn, they're up their asses, man. Yep. Whatever the hell that is. Sounds delicious. Good God damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to try cognac. I keep hearing about it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm leaving, man. Jesus Christ, this is outrageous. <laughs> Before getting roasted. Yeah, well, you know, she don't know shit, so. Hey, one thing at a time. Slow your roll. Yeah, I'll be over here all the time. You know, you got to remember, when this was made, it was before you could just look anything, any recipe you wanted up. Depending on how old you are, like, you know, Older people know what I'm talking about. Rest recipes used to be passed down from generation to generation. My mom gave me her recipes, right? Her mom gave her recipes. Now you can just look anything you want up. Oh, raspberry pie with a lemon twist. Boom, there it is, you know? They get eight different ways to make beef stew. You know, like... <laughs> God damn. <laughs> damn, it right in front of your girls, too. Jesus, man. Hey, man. It wasn't a joke. He was going like this. That's not a joke when you're doing this. <laughs> Fucking hell. He'll pass the point where of what makes people laugh. Yeah. You mean like Carrot Top. But now it's like, you know, you don't even need help for anybody else. Like, you, know, you don't need to be taught shit. You just look it up. Obviously, this is just an excuse for him to talk, though. <laughs> the hell are you talking about, old man? <laughs> Maybe it is a better government. We, who knows, man? You never know what ultimate form the government will take after a generation or two. That's right, I'm drinking all this. <laughs> With no war, right? Governments turned into the worst version of themselves during wartime. A generation of two apiece, maybe it'll be better. Who knows? Yeah. For now. Shit. So they're going to bring it back into the story. The hell is that? Interesting. It's familiar, yet it's not. Alrighty, well, um, this will come as a surprise to you, but there's actually, I already recorded my end thoughts before the end of this, and that, nothing I've seen has changed that, so let's go ahead and go to that. I'm recording this in the middle. I had to stop the recording to turn off the air conditioner because the air conditioner was so fucking loud, right? It would have been stupid. So, since I'm pausing anyway, I just want to make this comment that I was trying to make during what I was trying to read this, but also say this at the same time. So I'll just say this here and stick it at the end. But um, this reminds me of the world of ice and fire. And George R. R. Martin spent years figuring out he had this 300 year lineage of these uh, kings of Westeros. 
and he had filled in a lot of details with some of them, and he hadn't really said much about uh, some of them. Like one of them, and I can't remember which one, what his name was, maybe Jaharis or something like that. They said he ruled for sixty years, and it was an uneventful time. So he was able to time jump sixty years, because three hundred years. Think about having to fill up three hundred years of history, right? Just uh, monarchy politics. Three hundred. Just sit down with a pen and paper right now and try to plot the the course of a country for three hundred fucking years of uh, just kings. Who was the king? Who was his heirs? Which person eventually took the throne? You had to fill this out for 300 years. That's what, 10 generations? Maybe 12 generations, depending on how you count a generation. I was, is it 20, 25, 30? Typically, they say 25. I've seen 20, though. So we're talking 12, 14 generations, right? And so uh, King may not just rule for one generation, like, you know, just Jahari's guy, he ruled for three generations. But some of them may be just king for a couple of years because you got to mix it up. You can't say, okay, well, you had a king, you ruled for 50 years. His son ruled for 60 years. His son ruled for 45 years. His son ruled for 70 years. Like, th- nobody's going to believe that. So you got to mix it up. Somebody only ruled for three years. So how do you do that? Do you just roll die? Like, okay, the die says it's uh, an eight, so he'll roll for 16 years. You know, you know so you, you, you got to sit there and plot this shit out and figure it out, right? Like, it takes so much fucking time. And a lot of people don't want to do it. That's the best one I've seen is The World of Ice and Fire written by George R. R. Martin. He spent a lot of time filling this up. And the funny thing was, like I said, he said this one guy ruled for unavailably. When he did Fire and Blood, which was an elaboration of it, actually, I think Fire and Blood was what I was talking about. The World of Ice and Fire came first. And that was the one where they were talking about, oh, this one guy, you know, Jerry, he ruled for 60 years and nothing happened. Well, then when he did Fire and Blood, he went into graphic detail of the first 150 years of those kings in these generations and what happened each, he went each generation, what happened with each generation in graphic detail, right? So it was a full book, a coffee table book, just the first half of that 300 years I was talking about. So then he went in graphic detail with Jaharis, right? This uh, guy, supposedly enough to happen six years, well, then he went back and backfilled it and said all this shit to happen. So that's what we're seeing here. You see, he's mixing up. One guy ruled for 20 years. One guy only ruled for one year. Like, you got to mix that up. And it's just, it, it's, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want, but like, this feels real. This feels like a real history. I've read histories. I've read histories of monarchs. So this, this family was in control of England for 178 years or whatever. Yeah, there's a flow to it. There, there's just a way it kind of plays out. Some people, they, they last a long time. Some don't last very long because they're just not good at it. Some can't see the assassination coming. You know what I'm saying? There's just a flow to it. You're either good at it or you're not. It's an art form. Nobody can teach you how to do this kind of world building. You're either instinctively or good at it or you're not. Whoever wrote this is really fucking good at it. This is as good as that George R. R. Martin shit, which is the highest compliment I can give. But yeah, that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, I'm going on to the next one. But before I go on to the next one, I'm going to be watching the rest of this one that you've already seen me react to. So, the whole timeline's fucked up. Alrighty, let's go to the third episode of this block. And uh, this is episode 60. And we're going on one. Three, two, one. I'm enjoying this. That was a great episode. Last episode was great. Some people might be like, man... Bunch of backstory, bunch of talking, ain't nothing happening. I assume there's going to be another major story arc soon. And I'm patient for that, because the world building was great. The politics and the shenanigans, you know, what's happening with the old people, you know, the, the defeated people. It makes me wonder, what do you think they're doing with uh, the former president of the Alliance? Is he also under house arrest somewhere? Because this is house arrest. Even though you have a little bit of freedom to come and go, you're still under house arrest, essentially. I assume he is. And he's even more dangerous because he's a political figure. And they're probably way more worried about politics than there are some general or admiral who no longer has a military to command. The only reason they're worried about Yang is they're afraid he might go into politics, right? It could affect the the will of the people. Affect the populace. Like, rise him up, you know? Create a revolution. They're not worried about him as a military commander. They're worried about him as a political entity. So, what are they doing to the political entity, you know, that is the former president? He's the one that sued for peace. Still, you'd be worried about him. And obviously, this isn't his story. Nobody cares about him. You know, he's only peripherally involved. But if this is all real life, that would be an issue. They would be worried about him, too. And somebody probably is in charge of, like, monitoring, just like the person's in charge of monitoring Yang, right?
There's probably other people too they're worried about. Yep, they're about to blow up all these fucking, uh... And you need to prevent this. The, um, on Earth, if, if this was a military water fleet, they would uh, repurpose this. Like, for instance, Dad's old ship, the Newport News, was turned into razor blades. They took all the steel and they turned it into razor blades. They, God knows how many razor blades they made, you know. Think about that. A fucking heavy cruiser, right? Thousands of tons of uh, steel. That's a hell of a lot of razor blades. They might still be making razor blades out of that son of a bitch. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, we don't have to worry about pirates or anything. That's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, motherfucker? Surrender your fleet. <laughs> Remember how I said, you know, maybe they're going to capture the the people manning these these crews, right? Maybe that's how the because you need to command, you know, you need people on board. All these ships are capturing. That's right. Surrender your fleet. Yeah, <laughs> bend the knee. <laughs> That's right. Give them up. We're taking this. And you better be calm when you hand them over. Exactly. They're recruiting too. <laughs> Are you going? I'm going. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck the Empire. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. What's up? Do we have to kick your ass? Exactly. Hell yeah, man. You goddamn right. That's what I'm talking about. I thought he might resist there for a second when he said he didn't know who they were. So who are the assholes who aren't, aren't going to go with him? Put them all on one ship and, you know, I'm not saying blow them up, but, you know, maybe take away their fuel. <laughs> What's up? We're taking this fleet. I'm into it. Fuck yeah. We're taking it all. <laughs> Only 4,000, huh? Oh, now he's... he's... <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. I like it. They still need more crew, though. Oh, shit. Yang's banner, motherfucker. Democratic Republicanism? Militarism? He's throwing a lot of ideological words out there. I get what he's saying. Where do you find out about Yang? Unless I'm lying to you. Okay, yeah, hey, fair enough, man. <laughs> That's why we're not using that name. You can't, this is not the way to do this. You can't let them say the word Yang first or they're going to think you're full of shit. <coughs> shithole oh shithole so. 
Yeah, so you need to say the name first. <laughs> hey, we're all friends here. Good enough. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I've been saying. You need more crew. So far, so good. I, I don't think he's equipped, but I think that was quite reasonable. Exactly. Yeah, it'd make you look uh, like an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> or that. Looks like you go wherever the wind blows, right? Pretty much. That's the thing. Now you're on the radar. You're on the radar. People would start putting this shit together. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should mention some other military commander. We're under the command of so and so. Somebody they know for a fact died. And so that way they'd be looking for a ghost. Because you know the guy that was going to go back and snitch to the people. We saw that happen, right? <laughs> well, I mean, he would never come in and surrender himself. That should be points in his favor right there, right? Quite shameful. <laughs> Fair enough, sir. <laughs> He's like, God damn, I got a migraine. <laughs> Shit, really? Ah, shit. I don't like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think this is a move, man. You're going to make him a martyr. Yep. Starting to remember Jesus Christ Superstar. His own people turned against him. Yeah, it seems like bullshit. I like that they call that a pillaging. <laughs> Not really technically accurate, but I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, there's no scenario where this ends well. That was some shit, man. Remember when both sides were fucking having civil wars at the same time? Yeah.
This is a fucking problem. He will, though. He's weak. Yeah. Yang needs to get the fuck out of here. What, killed him? <laughs> He's writing his manifesto. Oh, shit. Here we go. God damn, man. You have to be rude. Fuck. My friends are dressed like 1940s FBI. I guess her ID checked out. Huh? Thanks for the gun you put in here. <laughs> That's right. Talk your shit. Some of these fucking political activists are stronger when they're in prison. That's when they write their shit, you know. Their manifestos, their letters to the church and all that other crap, right? You know. <laughs> She's out of here. Fuck this. Fuck this facade of me being a cook. It's time to kick some ass again. <laughs> God damn. What, is she going to fucking intercept a fucking convoy? Shit. <laughs> I might just have to bust the cap. <laughs> I'm watching, motherfucker. I love her, man. She's ride or die. That's all you want. Overstead's pissed. The fuck you doing? This isn't what we were looking for. You need him to start some shit, man. On his own. No, you don't need to provoke it. <laughs> yeah, right, motherfucker. Yeah, fucking right. Horseshit. I love the, the effects they're doing with this. It's like It's a transmission from far away, so that just makes it feel like that, right? Good shit. Oh, shit. This motherfucker's always got to play it, man. You're gassing him up for a reason. You can't possibly believe he's capable of this. Oh, shit. And they think uh, Murtetz, whatever his name is, will intervene. Right, exactly. Right, right, right. That's very smart. I mean, it's worth a shot. It's not me risking my ass. <laughs> Either way. Either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yep, this guy's too fucking smart, man. Hey, man, don't be second-guessing me. I'm my own authority. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> He's even telling me what to say. Yeah, cut your own throat, bitch. <laughs> I'm surrounded by incompetence. <laughs> he recorded it all. God damn, man. Why does it got to be all that? Before, he just called you dog food. Hey, I didn't ask your opinion, motherfucker. Are you sure you want to question me? That's what, uh, since we're asking people what they're sure of. <laughs> exactly, yeah. They win either way, man. No matter what happens, they win. That's why he was gassing him up. 
That's why he's gasping. I, I was like, there's no way you believe he can surpass the, the fucking uh, exploits of the other people, right? <laughs> you were gassing him up for a specific purpose. Yeah, I'm even disgusted by your behavior. <laughs> scandalous, man. All these muffers are scandalous. Yeah, we think you're full of shit. <laughs> they really should have mentioned some other general's name, man. Or Admiral. Yeah, man, I'm astonished. Yeah, <laughs> he's one smartass, man. For sure. Big time smartass. This is outrageous. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to feel like it's all bullshit. Oh, you made you mad. <laughs> Very serious. Yeah, no shit. Exactly. Right, right. Yeah, they're all over us. Yeah. <laughs> I love how competent his entire posse is. All these guys, man. There's no dead weight among any of them. You know? <laughs> Talk your shit. I mean, they can do whatever the fuck they want. Exactly. You know, I don't really remember. I never heard anything about the the best generals in uh, European um, theater of World War II on either side being just murdered because they were so good, right? When the Germans cap captured Russian generals or French generals, they didn't murder them as far as I know. And vice versa, even the Russians, as brutal as they were, I don't think they just randomly murdered uh, German generals. I don't think they did. I could be wrong. <laughs> Calm down, dude. Right. Pretty much. We got to break him out. Before he can be put on a ship and expose the Admiral, right? Right. Right, right. Yeah. And then be crushed. Speaking of Jesus Christ Superstar, that was the whole point, right? That's why they turned on Jesus. They didn't want the Roman Empire to fucking come in and crush him again. Right. Everybody's got a fucking scheme and none of it's good for Yang. <laughs> exactly. They are bastards, aren't they?
Yeah, look at them. They're hanging on every word. <laughs> yeah, we got to fill our role, Beth. I regret everything. He looks like yeah. You should just take his place. You know, cover up the the freckles. <laughs> Cat Rose, huh? Kate Rose. God damn, dude. <laughs> you do sound like you're you are debaucherous. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Oh shit, here we go. We're getting all this bonding time because they're about to be murdered. Yeah, she doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want anything, man. Yeah, you guys are fucked. Yep. Shouldn't have been conspiring. Yeah. <laughs> I like your Tesla. Funny how he didn't have a seatbelt on when it was on auto drive. He trusts the computer that much. I ain't trusting that shit, man. What if somebody doesn't have auto drive and they get right in front of you? You're going to wreck, man. The computer can't account for that. God damn, they got a lot of cops. Oh, shit. Fortunately, they're incompetent. <laughs> Good thing there's literally nobody else on the road. <laughs> really? This is how we're going to end it? <laughs> yeah. It's just getting crazy, man. <laughs> Stop with the foreshadowing, motherfuckers. Let's just take it as it comes. The magician is captured. <laughs> Look at this shit. Interesting. Now, this is not what I saw coming. Like I said, I've been talking a lot. I'm, thinking, I'm trying to... I can't... I've read extensively um, about the Roman Empire and about World War II, both theaters... And a lot, uh, I used to, I did read a lot on the Civil War. That may have been where I started my study, so that shit's a little bit less clear. Let's see, anything else? I've started reading on Napoleonic Wars. And some of the stuff, not really good, Roman Empire, but some of the stuff like with the Romans were clashing with the Gauls and stuff like that. That's about it that I would know like a lot about. And in none of those fields of study as far as history goes, do I remember them just literally just straight up murdering generals when they've won the war. When they've won the war, they're occupying the other country. And they didn't used to occupy them. Like in World War II, you, you took over a country, you occupied them, right? Like, um, and like the Roman Empire, of course, would occupy them to a certain extent. But in a lot of cases, like say when you know, uh, German, when when England was fighting with France and Spain and Portugal and all this shit, it wasn't about occupying countries. It was about commerce. No, now in colonies too, it was about colonies. So I guess there's a certain amount of occupation there. You know, the French American War was uh, basically they uh, the, the English the French used to control Canada, right? That's why a lot of people they speak French. And then in the French American War, the the English took it over, right? So, um, so they, that was an occupied country at that point. But in none of those scenarios, now in the, uh, the, the war for independence, you know, when the United States rebelled against, uh, England, there was a, 
the narrative that if England had won, they would execute Washington and all these other people. Everybody, like, basically the founding fathers, right? Those men would have been lined up and they would have been hanged as traitors. Because that was a civil war. And yet, in the American Civil War, 100 years later, they didn't line up the, you know, Davis, Jefferson Davis, who was, who was actually the president of uh, the South, and Robert E. Lee, those are the two figureheads, right? You know, Robert E. Lee was in charge of the military. Jefferson Davis was in charge of the government. Neither one of those was executed. So it's interesting. And the North wasn't worried about the South rising again or whatever, you know. The South is broken. Their men have been destroyed. You know, the, the, their economy had been destroyed. They actually needed help from the North to rebuild. The economy had been destroyed. Production had been destroyed. The army had been broken. It was over. There was no rising again. So they weren't worried about these two rising up in their lifetimes. They were already old men, both of them. So that may be part of it. Yang in this scenario is younger. He's like mid-30s. He could sit by for 10 years, build up his strength, and then start some shit. So it is different. And obviously, like, it's a different scenario because it's a you know, different time period and shit. There's more people. When you have more people, you have more chance for mischief, political mischief. So, yeah, I can't think of any... This This isn't really ripped from the pages of history. I can't think of this. this that's why I think I find it so fascinating. Because they're not just like a lot of like Game of Thrones princes has been ripped from the War of the Roses and all, you know, you know even the Red Wedding was ripped from something that supposedly happened in history and some of these other things that, that he does supposedly happened just tweaked, changed, you know. Those are interesting, but if you know the history behind it, they're not as interesting. This is like super creative. So, anyway, uh, let me know if, you, if you've ever heard of, like, a, the winning side just fucking butchering the generals of the other side because they were mad they lost to them during battles. Let me know because I'd be very curious about that.